Coming up, a marriage torn apart. I left David. It, it, it just got to be too much. I just couldn't take it anymore. It's like he didn't love me. I, I really didn't know if I loved her because yeah. I didn't know how to love. And a revelation of love. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, uh, you loving my wife, talking about the church. He said, I've never told you to love my wife. He said, I told you to love your wife. Regaining Happily Ever After, next on Joni. Everyone has a story. The goal in marriage is not to think alike, but to think together. Remember, always make your today a masterpiece for your tomorrow. Every life has something to share. The world is crying for love and acceptance, and this is something that we as Christians can give them. From tragedy to triumph, your memories will always be of the adventure, not the arrival. So savor the ride. This is real talk about real topics that will change your life. You know, it's not what you go through. It's how you handle it that makes all the difference. So grab a seat and join the conversation. This is Joni Table Talk. Well, you've walked down the aisle. You've said, I do. It was your dream wedding. So what do you do when you're happily ever after? Turns out to not be so happy after all. Today, one couple shares their journey from the fairy tale to the true happy ending. Joining me around the table is my dear friend, Benita Artaberry. Welcome. Hi, I'm, I'm good, glad to be here. Thank you for having me. And we love to hear testimonies and stories of Absolutely. God's grace and mercy. That's how we overcome the enemy. That's, That's right. That's what the Lord said. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Anna Kendall, you believe in marriages? I believe in marriages and I know that people have problems, so today's program is going to be wonderful. Yes. Give, it, it give everybody hope. That's right. Yes. Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great and I'm happy Good. to be here. And our dear friends, David and Melanie Martin. Welcome. <laughs> so glad you are here to glad share your to story. Here. Glad to be here. I appreciate it so much because oh. testimonies are, they are irresistible. But I think when we're willing to open up and share some of our yes. struggles, what God has brought us through, yes. I think it's really powerful. Yes. Well, for Absolutely. Bishop David and Melanie Martin, the road to marital bliss was a rocky one to begin with. <laughs> and their marriage was about to breathe its final breath when God showed them what it really takes to make it. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the beginning. Miss Melanie, tell me when you met this uh, Prince Charming here sitting next to you. <laughs> well, I do believe I met him in 1975. Uh, I had just graduated from high school and we'd only known each other for 30 days and we wound up getting married. Oh, wow. Yeah, Everybody so, gasped on this yeah, side of the table. Because yeah. right. I think right. she actually had a boyfriend, breath. didn't you? Yes, I, I had a boyfriend <laughs> before uh, meeting up with David, but, um, and my parents wanted me to marry this guy because he was going to college and David was more of a thug and they didn't want me to have, <laughs> oh, no. they didn't want me to have. <laughs> my daddy said no way. Yes. Oh, mama did yes. too. Oh, my mama, mama did too. <laughs> yes. And, um, you know, David and I, um, uh, wind up getting married after 30 days. The part that we didn't tell, my dad gave him this, this ultimatum is because my dad came home one day and David was at the house and he wasn't supposed to be there. And he was in the tub and um, my dad <laughs> came home and the next Busted. thing I know, David was no longer in the house and I was trying to figure out, well, where is he? His clothes are here, <laughs> well, where next is he? Is. <laughs> and he next was question. a streaker. <laughs> Had gone to the pool in the apartment I complex. I can't believe she said that. I cannot believe uh, Where she we lived and got a towel. This was before Jesus. This was before Jesus. Yes. It's called yes. out in the open. Let me tell you, we, Way before Jesus. we, we, he, he was not saved when we got married. I don't Obviously know I if I would have married him. I think he's turning red. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we would have gotten married if he had been Christian because I wasn't. I wasn't familiar with it. I did not know anything about it. Okay. I married him because his sister introduced me to him and I thought he was handsome. And, and your dad and said, if you want to marry her, that's one thing, but 
You're not just going to... No, he said I couldn't see her anymore. Couldn't uh, see, you couldn't and, see and me I, anymore. And I, to get back at him, I asked him, could I marry her? And he said and yes, said and yes. I wasn't expecting him to. he was like, uh... Oh, humming, oh, humming, oh, humming, oh, humming, oh, humming, oh, humming, oh, humming. Oh, my goodness. Now, let's hear a little bit of your perspective, though, because I don't know if you can outdo Melanie's story. <laughs> you know, yes. it's pretty you can't. <laughs> I'm not going to even try. <laughs> No, no I, 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 he told me I couldn't see her anymore, and, and I tried to, you know, get back at him spite. I just said, well, can I marry her? And he said, well, yes. And I said, uh, <laughs> can I rephrase that question? <laughs> <laughs> but, we, you know, we got married. And, and, but you and really did genuinely fall for her, I mean, early on. And you, I mean, you really, there was a real attraction and a love that you had for her early on. Very much. Well, you know, I'm, I'm not for sure because, you know, when you're young, everything is about the physical, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. let's be realistic. Everything mm -hmm. is about the physical. Mm -hmm. I, I really didn't know if I loved her because yeah. I didn't know how to love yeah. because I, yeah. I didn't come from a home that showcased that. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, she, what she didn't say is that we, we met and 30 days later we were married. And then a year later, I gave my life to the Lord. And mm -hmm. she didn't marry a Christian. She mm -hmm. married a guy. David Earl. Right, who was, <laughs> you know, partying and, yeah. and doing those kind of things. And, and that's what she wanted because she was in a home that was very strict. And I realized this later on. That was one of the problems uh, that the Lord revealed to me when she left after we had been married. We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, she was under strict guidelines in her parents' home. And then she married me. Mm -hmm. And a few a year later, we're in the church, and now you got all these new guidelines. You can't right. wear this. Mm -hmm. You can't go here. So that t it took away everything yeah. that she really wanted with me. Right. You know. And so what happened, Melanie, when he when he got saved and gave his heart to the Lord? There was probably a change that took place in his life. Were you not ready for that change? Absolutely not. <laughs> That's not what I married. <laughs> you know, I'm like, where are you taking me? You taking me to this church? They're doing stuff that. I'm not used to this, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh. Now I can't wear pants. I can't wear makeup. I'm a young girl. Yeah. I'm 17. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. know? I don't understand what's going on. So now where are you as far as your relationship with God at that point, Melanie? I didn't have a relationship with God at that point. I just watched my husband. I, uh, I loved him and I wanted to do what he wanted to do and I wanted to go places with him. Well, we weren't having problems at first, yeah. but apparently, you know, I honestly, Joni, I, I didn't know how to treat her. Mm -hmm. You know, I never, I never, this is a sad commentary, but it was years into my life. I was probably into my 40s when I really started to see a man show affection toward a woman. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there were no examples in no, your childhood? I had no examples. Even so, none in the church? Right. And her father, my father left yeah. my mother when I was three. Yeah you know, my uncles, mm -hmm. and, and then when I got in the church, you know, it wasn't in the church. Yeah, right. you, you didn't see a lot of that. You saw men go their way, mm -hmm. all the guys, you know, there was no examples there. So I, I didn't have a pattern. Ezekiel says, show the pattern to the house. I didn't have a pattern mm -hmm. to, of, of affection and love. And so, you know, I didn't know how to treat her. I didn't know how to be sensitive to her. I didn't know how to, how to hug her and hold her. And, and minister to, to her, her needs, yeah. how to yeah. talk to her. Yeah. I didn't know how. So 10 years into the marriage, oh after like, and this doesn't sound unfamiliar to no, you with all the, all. all the couples that you mm -hmm. counsel. Um, if you don't resolve those issues early on, they just start building they and building do. and building. They do. and you so, keep going around the same mountain, only each time it picks up speed, yeah. gets a little worse. Yes, yes. Yeah. So around the 10 year mark, after you'd had your son, um, Melanie, you, you left David. I left David. It, it, it just got to be too much. I just couldn't take it anymore. It's like he didn't love me. Uh, it was so many things that was going on to the, in the church that uh, you need to make sure she's doing this. You need to make sure she's doing that. And I'm like, you've mm -hmm. never been like that with me. Yeah. Why are you doing that now? Was there one presenting factor that caused you to leave? Was it, or one day was it just too much or what happened? I, th I think it's accumulation. I, I loved her, if this makes sense. I loved her, but you know, I didn't know how to love her. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. It does if, make if sense. If that makes sense, yes, I, I did does. love her. But. No, and if you're mm -hmm. not, if you're not meeting that need, mm -hmm. and if you're not fulfilling that need, the, the enemy always has someone out there that can do that. Yes. Absolutely. Right. And yeah. so, Melanie, for you, once you separated, 
then you just kind of, did you just kind of turn your back on the Lord at that point? Oh yeah, I just, went on and just, you know, three and a half years, um, uh, like I shared with the ladies, the three and a half years, I knew I had to get back with David. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what happened in the three and a half years, I knew God had promised us that we were going to start this ministry and I believed him. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what I did in those three and a half years, some kind of way, I'm gonna have to get back with this man because mm -hmm. we gotta start this ministry. Yeah, yeah. wow. That's and huge. you know, huge. after a while, we tried to get back we, we well, I was dated just maybe one yeah. time and, you know, I spent the night over at the house or something and it didn't work out. Hey, get your stuff. I'm taking you home. Well, well, okay, you were hurt, take right? me home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh. Well, I mean, you, you felt, I'm sure at that point then you, you felt abandoned by her and you were dealing with your own issues of a broken marriage. Yeah, and he had the son too. That, and, and, and uh, I was angry. You know, I was bitter. Uh, I, not what she was doing. It didn't even matter. It didn't, even, didn't even care. I was angry, first of all, the mere fact that she left. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and what was going on in her mind and in mine was two different things because as bad as she thought it was, in my mind, it wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. It, it wasn't bad enough. Right. She shouldn't make, have left because right, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, bad enough to make this kind of decision. And right. and I'm in corporate America, trying to make a living for her and my son. And I come home from from office, and my apartment is empty. Mm -hmm. And and she's gone. And 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 I'm struggling with this because I'm like, what happened? Because. Right. It wasn't that it bad. It wasn't to that you. bad to me. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you there's know. when there's not good communication, you know, you don't understand these things. Both yeah. of you had different points of view mm -hmm. and you did neither of you knew how to communicate it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And and, and and you wasn't trained or developed yes. or given tidbits yes. or nuggets mm -hmm. on how to. Th th this is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't no. uncommon then. Right. No. You know, no. and, and, and it's an epidemic. It's an sure. epidemic. Yes. It's an epidemic. With, we just try to keep it yeah, quiet. With yes. people in the church you know, that you mm -hmm. think they're Absolutely. fine. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter, Joan, and I've learned this, just because you're in the same house don't mean you're married. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. Right, yeah. Don't don't right. don't really mean you're living a marital life, yes, right, you know. Yeah. And we were in the same home, but we weren't married. Mm -hmm. Wow, parallel lives. Well, when we come back, dealing with brokenness and the phone call that changed everything, the story's going to get better. Stay with us. <laughs> Well, for Bishop David and Melanie Martin, 10 years of marriage had ended in anger and heartache, and they were well on their way to divorce. As Melanie and David lived their separate lives, three and a half years would pass. But little did they know, God was working in each of their hearts, and one phone call would change it all. Mm. Now, a little background, David and Melanie, you, you said, I mean, for those three and a half years, you kind of did your own thing. Mm -hmm. You uh, kind of away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And yet in your heart of hearts, you knew, you knew that God's hand was upon your life and you were running really from the call of mm -hmm. God on your life. Yes. And so David, you, um, three and a half years, that is a long time. I mean, at some yes. point <laughs> you're thinking, well, I don't, I don't see any hope of this marriage ever being restored. And, and divorce was just, you know, right around the corner, right? It was. It was right around the corner. And, and you know, it's strange, but I, I wasn't asking for the Lord to restore the marriage. Mm -hmm. I was asking the Lord for direction. Mm -hmm. You know, where do I go from here? How do I deal with this? What do you want me to do? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. not. That's Lord, a good question you know, to ask, by the way. Right. Yes. If you're in the middle of a situation, yes. instead of going with what all those voices, you just need to say, Lord, what yes. do you want me to do? You may be surprised okay. at, Absolutely. Right. at what you He's going to ask you to do. Right. You so you're, you're yeah. asking the Lord, you. what do I do? What do I do? In fact, y'all were just a week or two away from the divorce being final. Right. And, and you had cause for, for divorce. I mean, where yes, you could, we had in the sight of the Lord, you could be divorced. 
for Melanie because of the way she was and living at that point. And according to the world, I had, I had justification. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, it, it wasn't until probably three years after that, maybe even three, over three years, when I really started to pursue a divorce because mm -hmm. I was really trying to just find answers. I, I just wanted God to talk to me, say mm -hmm. something to me. Yeah. And, and he wouldn't say anything to me about the marriage. Wow. And, yeah. and, and so finally, after talking to my pastor and, and finally saying, well, you know, you, you maintain and, you know, you've kept a good report, you know, there's no reason, you know, and, and no one can judge you. Yeah. And, and so I went on a date reluctantly. Reluctantly. And, and, but one week before the divorce was final. Well, you, before you say one week, <laughs> before we tell you about the phone call, <laughs> what did you preach? <laughs> before oh, the yeah. phone call. I, you know, I, I but, well, this was, this was before she left, you know, because uh, uh, I, I was asked to preach at my church and, and I, I preached about Hosea and, and, and didn't have a clue that God was preparing me because he was about to make me Hosea. Yes. And, and, it's and it's amazing, yeah. you know. Now, uh, I didn't know that, mm -hmm. you know, but he, but he did. Yeah. And, and we went through the whole process and, and she was doing her thing. I didn't want to know. I didn't want to know what was going on, who she was with, uh, anything like that. I didn't pursue it. I didn't become a mm. uh, you know, private investigator. I didn't yeah, call yeah, cheaters, you know, <laughs> <laughs> anything like that, you know, because I, I honestly, I didn't want to know. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, one week before the divorce is final, what happens? She calls. She calls, and 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 you know. She calls. She calls. Three and, and a half years, and Melanie calls. And, and you know, and I would never forget that day, in all my life. Reason being because, it, it was it was so heartbreaking for me that, and I, and I don't consider myself a weak man, but, uh, and you can call whatever one to find weak, but, the only way I could go to sleep at night was cry, every night mm -hmm. for three and a half mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. The only way I could go to sleep, was, I would cry. And, and mm. somehow wake up the next morning because I wow. had a very hectic job. And, and this particular night, it was about, I guess, 2, 12, 32, and I was getting ready to do my cry thing so I could go to sleep. And the phone rang, and I didn't know who it was, and I picked it up, and it was her. And she said, uh, can I come back home? And I've, the man of God said, absolutely, positively, no. Oh my God. Right before he was going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> this is my cry, oh, man. You missed no. it. Oh, no. I said, oh, no. I mean, and it was much more heated than that. Mm -hmm. I said, no. What do you mean, can you come back home? You've been out there all this time, and now you want to come back home? No. You know, now I've, I can finally go on and live my life? Absolutely not. And I slammed the phone down and almost broke it. It was one of the rotary. And then, and then God said, and then the Lord, who hadn't talked to me, John, <laughs> All this for time. three and a half years. <laughs> mm. And finally, you tell me, you got to take her back. Did you argue with him? I remember the exact words I said to him. Mm -hmm. And I shared this with Marcus. I said, I said, God, you're cold-blooded. Oh. Mm -hmm. And, and, and yeah. I meant that. Sure. I didn't even care if he killed me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in my heart, I was already dead. Mm, yeah. And I didn't care and that if was he, just the last I didn't thing, care if it? he killed me. Mm. Yeah. I mm. said, you're cold blooded. You're gonna make Melanie cry. I'm <laughs> already <laughs> and, and, I, and I picked the phone back up and and, and I called. Mm. And 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 I felt like such a chump. I felt like such a weak man. I mm. felt like such you know, wow. you got to pick the phone. You've been faithful. Mm -hmm. You've done the right thing. You've yes. been still preaching. You've been still living this Christian life. And, and you got to pick right. Stuff came right. 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 Like I was right. perfect in the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Okay. And I wasn't. Kind of like the prodigal son. And I brother. wasn't. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. They <laughs> stayed home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I picked up the phone and, and I said, uh, you can come back. And she came back. And when she came back, it was not a pretty picture. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that's the other part of the story. That's right. People yeah. don't know this. You know, that's right. You know, just because you still gone. had to work through that's right. your issues were still there. Right. Right. Issues that's were right. still there. That's yeah. right. And did, right. did God begin to show you things about yourself? You know, honestly, God never showed me her. He showed me me. 
He showed me all the things that I did wrong. Look at that. That How is so I good. Didn't that is love wonderful. Her. God yes. didn't show me you know, anything about her. He just yeah. kept showing me I'm about I'm going to tell you what God spoke to me. Because after, right after that, we started the church. And I got so busy with the church. And she still wasn't getting the kind of affection and love mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that she should. And I was in prayer one uh, Tuesday night. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, uh, he said, uh, you loving my wife, talking about the church. He said, I never told you to love my wife. He said, I told you to love your wife. Mm -hmm. Wow. He said, you love your wife, and I love mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I thought that at being the man of God, I'm supposed to love the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His that bride. was a higher calling. That's right. Understand. That's right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And he said, yeah. that's not your wife. Yeah. He said, this is your wife. Mm -hmm. He awesome. said, you love your wife, I love mine. Did you see a change in him after after the Lord began to deal with him and say, you got to start loving your wife? Did, did things start to get better? Well, actually, when he told me, no, I couldn't come back home, I started to cry wow. because I felt like you told me to call him. Mm -hmm. You said it was okay for me to go back now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I call and he says no. Okay, so I'm hurt too. So, you know, after he made that phone call and we got back together and I went back home and I cried every day for a whole year at some point in the day mm -hmm. because it was just so hard being back there and I'm not sure if this is going to work out. I'm not sure if this love is still here, but I know you told me to come back and, you know, and I'm just trying to be obedient and, yeah. and do what you said. And That's the process, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the process. I mean... That is the process as a result of what you guys had gone through. Yeah. For people to think, mm -hmm. you know, those of you that are listening, and you can relate to what we're talking about, you, yeah. you can't just think overnight, Anna, yes, it's gonna be know, okay. that, you know, yeah. that everything's know. just going to be back because there were a lot of unresolved issues that had to be dealt with. Let me, let me tell you, as a, as a pastor, as a bishop, this, Joni, this program today, this discussion, is needed yes, much more than you can imagine. Yes, yes, yes. Baby, it yes, is, this yeah. is needed. This discussion, this dialogue, mm -hmm. this needs to be brought to the table much more. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just talking about uh, laity. Mm -hmm. In the church. Uh, in, yes, the in the church. Mm -hmm. It needs to be discussed because yes. it is happening, y'all. There yes. are people who, who, as Bishop Jacob said, who are, are, are Public success and private failure. They're That's miserable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. Don't know yeah. how to Priorities love. Priorities are in order. And, and yeah. out of order. And not only that, don't know how. The church haven't allowed. The yeah. church didn't even allow us. I, I was speaking in, in Patterson, New Jersey, and I walked out on the stage, and, and my first time there. And, and I said to the audience, because you look at them, it looked like they are so antiquated, mm -hmm. you know, just haven't been allowed to live. Mm -hmm. And I turned to the all those pastors that came to hear me speak and the bishop that invited me. And I said, you know, gentlemen, I said, we have done a masterful mm. job on teaching people how to die, mm. what it takes to make it to heaven. Mm. I said, what we fail them is teaching them how to live. That's true. Wow, that is true. That's so true. Mm -hmm. That is true. That is so We've not good. told them. We don't, we have a, we weren't even allowed to love, mm -hmm. to, to mm -hmm to express, to have public affection, mm -hmm. to kiss, to mm -hmm. hold. Mm -hmm. We yeah. weren't allowed to talk about sex. Yeah. And I always had a problem with that. The same people that's telling you you can't talk about sex got 10 kids. What did it do for you, Melanie, when he started loving you the way you needed to be loved? I wouldn't trade him for anything. He's, David is, is, is gold. Wow. He really is. He is. You're going to make is, me cry. <laughs> he is. He, he, he is gold, and he always looks out for me. And, and we started this relationship class uh, every Sunday morning at 8.15. And um, I told the class that you're going to have to pray for the two of us. If we're going to be conducting this class mm -hmm. for the next year or two. Or three. <laughs> three, you're really going to have to pray. <laughs> You're going to have to pray for this relationship because, yeah. you know, we're going to be a major target yeah. if we're going to be teaching you yeah. how to grow in your relationship. You know he's going to target yes. us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we need prayer yeah. because I don't want to come in here on a Sunday morning and have an attitude because we got into it.
Yeah. Now, what do I have to say to y'all? Yeah. Now, it has happened one Sunday. I did go in, and I had nothing to say that day. And I'm like, no, you talk all day. And we told you them, know. said, the, the, you, you might have that. Right. I said, but it's going to be good for y'all. Yes. Just to see how you can still do You're being real right. before right. this. Right. Yes. But the beauty yeah. of that yes. is, is you guys' transparency. It's like Absolutely. we said at the beginning Absolutely. of the program. You know, marriage is work. Yes, it's wonderful, mm -hmm. yes. but it's work. It's and, work. And you have to have a servant's heart. Absolutely. You can't go into it selfishly mm -hmm. or you're not going to be happy, so mm -hmm. don't even get married. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. we are out of time. I hate it. Oh, I hate it. It just goes by so fast. Oh, no. I wish we had I love some more you guys. Time. Oh, we love you Thank more. you for sharing great. your story. Oh, bless you. It is so amazing. It's going to help so many of you. I know that some of you are watching today and you can relate to what David and Melanie have, have talked about. I think we're coming to a, a place in the body of Christ where everyone, all of us, those in leadership, those in the church, those outside the church, that the only way we're going to reach people for the cause of Christ is to be real and honest Absolutely. about Absolutely. life. Yes. And, and we've got to be willing to show Absolutely. some of our scars yes, or people can't be yes. healed. And we put up this perfect persona, you know, uh, people can't relate to that. So they've done that today mm -hmm. and I applaud them yes. for that. Well, you yes. can visit them online at davidemartin.org. And if your marriage is going through a difficult time, guess what? That's why we did the show today. Yeah. Yeah. We want to pray for you. There are prayer partners that are standing by. You want to be sure if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area, you can visit you guys. Tell us when Gospel services Tabernacle. are. Gospel, Gospel Tabernacle. Tabernacle. And the, the address? Gospel Tabernacle, Dallas, Texas, 445 South Masters. Then 815 for the class. All right. And they've got the class. So mm -hmm. if you uh, want to be a part of that, I know they'd love to have you. Well, thank you so much, guys. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Yes. Thank we'll you get ladies. you to come back. Yes. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye yes. for today. This has been a Daystar Television production.